What's up everyone? We've been getting more and more questions on how to hook up an amplifier to a stock stereo. So today, we're gonna go over line output converters, what they are, what they do, and how to install them. A line output converter converts speaker level or high level amplified signals into low level signals, those that you can actually feed an amplifier with. Your issue is on most stock stereos, they don't have low level RCA outputs. So you need to create a signal that the amplifier can then amplify. So we're gonna use this aftermarket Pioneer deck as an example. So if this were your stock stereo, you would have multiple speaker outputs either directly from the radio or from a factory amplifier. Obviously these are amplified and are direct leads to the speaker. Assuming your factory radio doesn't have RCA low level outputs and none of them do, we're gonna to have to convert these speaker level outputs to a low level signal that our amplifier can amplify. In most basic trim level vehicles, the radio does the actual amplification. So you would have four wires, possibly six running to the factory speaker locations. As you saw in our earlier video, in this particular vehicle, we had four outputs, but we actually had six factory speakers. But the wire junction for the tweeter and the woofer is actually done in the door, so we only have four outputs. But in higher level trim vehicles and higher end vehicles, you're going to usually have a factory amplifier. So you're gonna to have to hunt that down and figure out which outputs you have. You may have six, you may have eight, you may have nine, You'll just need to make a determination as to how many you have. And on those higher end systems, you're actually going to need to test outputs to figure out which ones are mid-range, which ones are tweeter, and which ones are bass, depending upon what type of system you're trying to install. So how do line output converters work? Well, what they do is they have a reduction transformer. So they have a certain amount of windings for the inbound signal and a certain amount of windings for the outbound signal. That creates a reduction in output voltage. So it takes our high level speaker level input and creates RCA low level outputs. Not every aftermarket amplifier is gonna require a line output converter. Some amplifiers accept anywhere from two to 11, 12, even 14 volt inputs. Depending upon what amplifier you may have, you may be actually be able to cut just raw speaker leads, solder on RCAs, and use that as the direct input to the amplifier. You can see here we have a Pioneer 4 channel that actually has speaker level inputs. It has a harness which allows you to put high level speaker inputs, and as you can see, they actually match the speaker level outputs of our aftermarket stereo. Now on a stock stereo, you're not gonna have the luxury of having these wiring colors. You'll have to make a determination as to what wiring colors and wire pairs the manufacturer is using to go to each speaker location. For the installation of James's system last year, we went ahead and used the PAC LP7-2. The reason we did that is the Kenwood amp that we chose, or the system that we chose, actually did have speaker level inputs and remote signal sense. But what we did want for future upgrades, we wanted to use a higher quality line output converter. The reason for that is typically the line output converters that you can buy in the aftermarket have a flatter frequency response. Some of the higher end line output converters actually have a load circuit. That's particularly important in systems that's where you're actually no longer going to use any of the factory amplification. Some amplifiers or factory amplifiers and factory radios will have trouble when they see no load. You can actually create a problem where you have speakers popping because the factory amp or the factory radio no longer sees a speaker. The PAC LP7-2 and the PAC LP7-4 both have those load circuits. In James's install last year, we tested all four speakers and we found that the rear speakers had full range output. So we actually tapped the rears. We could have tapped the fronts because they were full range as well. But for the sake of convenience, we just went ahead and tapped it on the rear deck, made our life easy. When we did the install in my vehicle, 
the actual full range output came from the fronts. The rears were limited output, so if we had tapped those, we would have actually had no bass. It would have sounded terrible. But in my vehicle, we also needed the load circuits because my factory radio had nothing but problems when trying to figure out if there were speakers connected and it would start popping as you turned up the volume. What we mean by full range output is from 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. That way, we can amplify any signal to any amplifier. We can use the internal crossovers of the amplifier to control that signal. And the reason why you want full range outputs is if you're only connecting a subwoofer, you only need to really worry about the bass frequencies. But if you're connecting a four channel amplifier, you're gonna to need to worry about the mid range and the high level frequencies. So you wanna make sure you have a consistent and full range output to connect an amplifier to. Where you get into a little bit more level of difficulty is when you have multi-channel systems. So that's systems that have a factory amplifier that have probably separate tweeters, separate mids, possibly even separate woofers in the doors, and definitely a subwoofer. Typically those systems can consist of either six channels, seven channels, eight channels. And in a case like those, you'll need to use like an audio control LC6i or an LC7i. Those allow you to get multiple channel inputs. Some even do summing, some even do equalization. So that way you get a full range output and all the signals are combined for a clean and pure signal to a multi-channel external amplifier. The connection to a line output converter is simple. All you gotta do is take the speaker level outputs to the inputs of the line output converter and you're done. Since we've already gone ahead and replaced James' speakers, we're gonna just mimic the installation. Since we've identified our positive and negative leads, which is something you will need to do either by looking up schematic or testing for polarity, we'll just go ahead and make our connection. What you'll do is you'll tap the negative and you'll tap the positive. So since we don't actually wanna cut his install apart, procedure would be to tap these two leads. So once we've tapped at the speaker, the next connection will be to the line output converter. In this case, it'll be the amplifier because it has one built in. But if you have an external line output converter, there's a two or four channel input and you'll begin making your connections. Since we've identified polarity, and in this case we made red positive, that will go to the solid purple lead and the non-striped wire we've made negative. So we'll connect that to the purple with the black stripe, which is the negative input of the right rear speaker. And next we'll do the exact same thing with the left rear speaker. Make those two connections and your line output converter, or in this case, your speaker level inputs are connected. So we're gonna take you back to a year ago to show you exactly how we wired James's line output converter. We wanted to wire the line output converter from the top to conceal the wiring. We used the Metro wiring harness to plug into the factory speaker connector and created a T harness with one lead to the speaker and one to the line output converter. And to keep it completely stock, we ran the cables along with the factory wiring. We crimped and soldered female disconnects and insulated our connectors with heat shrink tubing and Tessa fabric tape, then slid our connectors onto the Kenwood speakers. Then we mounted the line output converter wired our T harness to the inputs of the line output converter, soldered our connections, then used heat shrink to insulate, applied tester tape to make it look factory. Our blue wire is our remote turn on output from the line output converter to the remote turn on input on the Kenwood amp. Finally zip tied and screwed our wiring down. In the case of James's, we use an LP7-2 with remote turn on. What a remote turn on signal does is actually indicate to the amp to turn on. Line output converters with built-in remote turn on circuits will require power connections. So in the LP7-2, we have a ground connection and we have a power connection. This is a constant power connection. In James's install, we got constant power from the same place we did at the amplifier and we got ground at the same place we did for the amplifier. So why do we have two wires left? 
Well, the blue wire is the remote output signal. So this will go to 12 volts and tell the amplifier to turn on when a signal is present. The brown wire is used when you have noise. Typically that's engine noise, either a low or high pitched hum. This will allow you to actually ground the line output converter at the signal level to chassis ground, hopefully removing any ground loops. So the very last connection, if using an external line output converter, is to connect the RCAs. Pretty self-explanatory. Hopefully this helped clear some things up on what a line output converter is, what speaker level inputs and outputs are, and how to wire one. Make sure to check out qualitymobilevideo.com for all your car audio gear and line output converters. Subscribe if you're new, and make sure to follow us on Instagram, and thanks for watching.